Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today, we are taking the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D and installing it on a few different B350 and X370 motherboards to see, well, if it works and if it does, how well. Pretty simple stuff, really, but it's also kind of a big deal as these boards here are now five years old. So having the ability to successfully pair them with one of the world's most powerful gaming CPUs really would be something quite special. Now, earlier this year, we got word that AMD are exploring the possibility of expanding support for Ryzen 5000 series processors to 300 series motherboards, which was extremely exciting news for those of you who are still rocking a B350 or X370 motherboard, especially if it was a particularly high-end model as having to spend more money on a four or 500 series board just to snag an affordable part like the Ryzen 5 5600 isn't all that appealing. In fact, it's just not appealing period, regardless of the 5000 series CPU you plan to upgrade to. This was a smart move by AMD because if first generation Ryzen owners were faced with having to buy a new motherboard in order to acquire a current generation CPU, they would certainly consider going with Intel's Elder Lake series, which typically offers greater performance for roughly the same price and you get a few new features such as PCIe 5.0 as well. Interestingly, initial support for Ryzen 5000 series processors on 300 series boards started popping up very early on this year, but oddly only for budget A320 boards, which most of you wouldn't have purchased as let's be honest, they were all pretty garbage. Since then, support to date has been pretty sketchy with some B350 and X370 boards supporting Ryzen 5000 series processors, and even then the performance hasn't always been where it should be. After probing AMD for information about a month ago, they told us sit tight and wait for a GSA version 1.2.0.7, which was expected to be rolled out across all AM4 motherboards. And crucially, it would bring proper Ryzen 5000 series support to B350 and X370 motherboards, including support for the 5800X 3D. Of course, it is ultimately up to AMD's board partners to roll out these updates for their various AM4 products, but it does look like they're all on board and we have models from MSI, ASUS, and Gigabyte to try out, all of which offer public access to a GSA 1.2.0.7. So for updating each board, I simply installed the Ryzen 5 1600 as the original BIOS on the older B350 and X370 boards would recognize that CPU. I then flashed to the latest BIOS, removed the 1600 and installed the 5800X 3D. This was quite easy on the MSI and Gigabyte boards. I simply went with the latest BIOS supporting the 1.2.0.7 microcode, but for ASUS, several previous BIOS revisions were needed to be installed before the board would accept the latest microcode. So it was more of an incremental update process, I suppose. One of the B350 boards that I've hung on to for future testing is the MSI B350 Tomahawk as it was one of the better quality B350 boards. And although it did only cost around hundred dollars US back in 2017, it is still very usable and it'd be a shame to retire it due to BIOS support, especially given that it handles eight core 16 thread Ryzen 7 parts relatively easy and can even avoid throttling with something like the 16 core 3950X, especially if you provide the VRM heat sinks with a little bit of airflow. When compared to modern budget AMD B550 and Intel B660 boards, you're really not missing out on much. Sure, it's PCIe 3.0 only, but that's still fine for gaming, and most gamers will be happy with the USB 3.1 Gen 1 support. There's even a Type-C, and in total the IO panel features six USB ports. There is only a single M.2 slot, but again, for gamers, this is likely going to be fine. So I'll be very keen to see how this one handles the 5800X 3D. The ASUS ROG Strix B350F Gaming was one of the more expensive B350 boards, I believe typically costing around $120 US. But this is a great looking board, the VRM probably isn't much more capable than that of the MSI B350 Tomahawk, and you still only do get a single M.2 slot, but the board came with a solid audio solution and even more USB ports. It's still a very usable board in 2022, and would certainly be given a new lease of life with Ryzen 5000 series support, which it now has. As for the X370 boards, I have the ASUS Prime X370 Pro, which was priced around $160 US back in 2017, so quite a pricey item. Again, only a single M.2 slot, but you did get front panel USB 3.1 Type-C, eight USB ports on the IO panel, all of which are USB 3 or better, decent audio and plenty of PCI expansion, 
So you could include more M.2 storage in the form of a PCIe card if you wished. Then we have the ASUS ROG Crosshair 6 Hero, and I'll tell you what, if I bought this thing back in 2017, I'd want to use it for as long as possible. This thing cost $255 US, making it one of the, if not the, most expensive first-generation AM4 motherboard. Frankly, it's not a board I would have recommended back in 2017, but if you did buy it, it probably worked out pretty well given that five years later you can pair it with a Ryzen 5000 series processor. It's a rather serious board, packing 10 USB 3.0 or better ports on the IO panel with an additional four USB 2.0 ports, so 14 USB ports in total. It also includes BIOS flashback, high quality audio, and plenty of other bells and whistles. Finally, we've also got the Gigabyte GA AX370 Gaming 5 to try out with the latest Agisa microcode. And this is another high-end X370 board which retailed for around $175 US. So a much more sensible option when compared to the Crosshair, and that made it a popular choice for Ryzen users. It's also yet another well-stocked X370 board with 10 USB ports on the IO, dual gigabit LAN, probably the best onboard audio of any AM4 motherboard of the time, and then dual BIOS support along with many more features. So those are all the B350 and X370 boards we have on hand for testing. And then for comparison, I've also updated the MSI B450 Tomahawk Max, MSI MPG X570S Carbon Max Wi-Fi, and ASUS ROG Crosshair 8 Extreme. All of them to the latest AGISA 1.2.0.7 microcode, which for these more modern boards, which already supported the Ryzen 5000 series, brings improved system stability. For testing, I'll be using the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D, though the results will be representative for all Ryzen 5000 series processors. So if there's no performance difference between the B350 and X570 boards, for example, with the 5800X 3D, the same will also be true for all Ryzen 5000 series processors, such as the Ryzen 5 5600, for example. Then for the memory, I've installed four DDR4-3200 modules into each board, resulting in a dual rank, dual channel CL14 configuration. And finally, the Radeon RX 6900 XT was used with SAM enabled, so let's get into the data. Starting with the Cinebench R23 multi-core test, we see that CPU performance is virtually identical across the B350, B450, X370 and X570 boards. From a three run average, the Gigabyte Gaming 5 produced the lowest score with the ASUS Crosshair hitting the highest. And between them, we saw just a 5% performance discrepancy. The Gigabyte board aside though, we're looking at no noticeable performance difference between the B350, X370 and X570 boards in this test, which is great to see. The same is also true of the single thread performance and here the Gigabyte Gaming 5 did stack up a bit better despite producing the lowest score by a very slim margin. We also see that the MSI B350 Tomahawk matched the much newer X570 boards without an issue. Now for a real world application, I ran the Adobe Photoshop 2022 benchmark and found all boards produced basically the same score. The X570 models were consistently a few points ahead, but we're talking about no more than a 1% margin, so a negligible difference there. Now, as we found previously, the 5800X 3D is a beast in the Factorio benchmark, and here we see that the X370 and B350 boards are capable of the same extreme performance seen on the latest and greatest X570 models. The Gigabyte Gaming 5 did again lag behind a little bit, this time trailing the ASUS X370 boards by around an 8% margin. So I'd say Gigabyte has a little bit of optimization work to do here, but the 5800X 3D did work without an issue. So in the grand scheme of things, that's an amazing result on a five-year-old motherboard. Now for some FPS benchmarks, and we'll start with Rainbow Six Extraction. It's worth noting that after a three run average, we did see a 4% performance variation between the MSI and ASUS X570 boards, with ASUS delivering the best result. Most of the 300 series boards were in line with the MSI X570S Carbon Max Wi-Fi, though oddly the Gigabyte Gaming 5 was a little bit faster here, basically matching the ASUS ROG Crosshair 8 Extreme, so that does contradict what was found in the Factorio benchmark. I've also fired up Death Stranding, and this game is heavily GPU limited, which is interesting as all boards tested delivered the exact same performance. So the fact that the 300 series boards are limited to PCIe 3.0 isn't an issue for this title, though worst case, we were only expecting to see around a 5% hit to performance. 
The Watch Dogs Legion performance was similar regardless of the board used, with at most a 4% margin seen between the various AM4 motherboards. Finally, we have Horizon Zero Dawn, and previously we found this title to be ever so slightly sensitive to PCIe bandwidth, which could explain why the 300 series boards are slightly slower, though the B450 Tomahawk is also PCIe 3.0 and it was slightly faster than the 300 series boards. Either way though, we're looking at most a 5% performance difference between the slowest and fastest AM4 motherboards here. So there you have it, pretty much all AMD 300 series motherboards should now work with Ryzen 5000 series processors. And while it was great to see budget B350 models, such as these two here, working with the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D, I think the real value here will be pairing these older boards with cheaper, more widely available parts like the Ryzen 5 5600 and Ryzen 7 5700X. Basically, if you still have a B350 or X370 board running a Zen or Zen Plus processor, swapping it out for a 5600 for just $175 US is a seriously good deal as it will improve CPU limited gaming by leaps and bounds. Our Ryzen GPU scaling content showed on average a 60% performance improvement for CPU limited gaming with peak gains beyond 100%. As a side note, the Ryzen 5 1600 processors are regularly selling on eBay for between $60 to $80 US, meaning that you could upgrade to a 5600 for around a $100 changeover fee, while the Ryzen 7 1700 owners will do even better. It's really a no-brainer at this point. There's simply no better move for those of you still using a 300 series motherboard. And AMD really should be commended for breathing new life into these old motherboards, and while I believe it is in their best interest to do so, it's still a big win for consumers. It's also great to see how well the AM4 platform has matured. All of these B350 and X370 boards ran flawlessly with the new microcode, all accepted four DDR4-3200 modules, and ran XMP without a hitch. Not only that, but AMD's new smart access memory technology also worked well. That said, there does appear to be a bug with the Radeon drivers, as they were unable to detect the availability of SAM on these 300 series boards, instead reporting that the feature was unavailable. However, it was possible to enable it at the BIOS level, and the expected performance uplift was achieved with SAM enabled. So it is working despite what the adrenaline drivers report. So in a nutshell, 300 series boards all look to have improved memory support with Ryzen 5000 series processors, the availability utilized SAM for big performance improvements, and most importantly, mirror the performance of much newer and more expensive X570 motherboards. As a follow-up to last week's video titled Why Ryzen Was Amazing and the Haters Were Wrong, I think this video does prove just how awesome the AM4 platform is, and AMD's by no means done here. Just last week during Computex, they announced their continued commitment to AM4 for at least the next few years. So you can expect the platform to improve beyond 2022. Great stuff that, and I just hope AMD manages to do the same with their upcoming AM5 platform, and even better, Intel smartens up and follows suit. And on that note, I'm gonna wrap this one up. Let me know if you still have a 300 series AM4 motherboard, and if you plan to snag a Ryzen 5000 series processor, or maybe you'll just upgrade to next gen AMD or Intel hardware. But anyway, let me know in the comment section below. As always, I'm very keen to hear from you. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, do that stuff. Uh, you can also subscribe to Floatplane or Patreon. Links for those are in the video description or get access to stuff like our exclusive Discord server, behind the scenes content, Q and A's and monthly live streams. One of those will be coming up very shortly actually. So yeah, check that stuff out. But if you're not interested, of course, that is perfectly fine. And again, I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.